So now season eight of The Walking Dead is at its mid-season break, and mm. we don't know what to do with ourselves. So we're just going to talk about this season. I've been doing a couple things season. myself. So, Have you? Yeah, we figured it out. Do we want to talk about them on the podcast, nope. though? Nope. Okay, didn't think so. Mm-hmm. But nonetheless, at least you've got something to occupy your time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Welcome to uh, The Podcasting Dead. We uh, are about to start doing a lot of other stuff, but uh, of course, as the name would suggest, we do spend a lot of time discussing The Walking Dead. Season eight is halfway through now with a startling revelation at the end of the mid-season finale and just oh where are we going so much controversy probably everything they wanted out of the coral bite you know what i mean it's glenn all over again you know it feels like it which i'm gonna say this before we go in i mean it's i i don't think we should have to but at the same time some people will fuss so spoiler alert because mm-hmm. i've had some people go use it spoiler alert wrong and it's like man i mean when it says episode discussion i mean you kind yeah, of thought, figure there's yeah, gonna be spoilers but so too. before we go into this there will be comic and show spoilers you have been warned mm. so now season eight has wrapped up and man you were just telling me matt that there is yes. what a petition to have scott gimbel fired Fifty thousand people that's have insane. signed a petition urging amc to fire Scott Gimple. I know there's a lot. I, you know, I, I in my own opinion, I, I've said that I didn't think he was as good a showrunner as they could have. But I, mean, I don't know if I wanted to see him fired. Oh, but then again, uh, 50, a lot of people, people do. People yeah. Do, yeah. Uh, listeners, if you wanted him fired uh, or even signed the petition, let us know in the in the in the comments. I want to see, you know. Oh, well, actually, our, it's more than fifty thousand people oh, on wow. the Change.org petition. I was just going into the uh, the source here. Um, it's just people being mad. I've seen people even petitioning to bring Carl back. Like, what do you do? You think that they're going to stop and completely refilm the second half of this season? He got a haircut, and I've seen a petition of people saying that they want him to grow it back. Right. So there's all sorts of petitions. So no one. We are truly a divided show, nation. Yeah, wow. So yeah. petition. Okay. Well, if petitions are that easy, JP, I say we sign a petition that Matt starts bringing us breakfast when he comes in to do these podcasts. Ooh, that would be nice. I can do that, but I get to choose the breakfast. Oh, Lord. Mm-hmm. I don't know, though. You're a man of fine culinary yep. taste. Oh, so we're gonna, breakfast may be actually... Yeah, yeah we're going to have uh, lemongrass and haggis next mm-hmm. week. I don't even know what haggis is. I'm pretty sure it's like the I intestines like it's of a sheep. Oh, okay. It's, 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 it's a curse. I, I put a haggis a on you. Yeah, I put a hey, haggis put the haggis on you, laddie. <laughs> well, we want to say before we get into this, we finally got over 1,000 <clears> subscribers, <throat> which is awesome. Oh! We, just this season, we've we've seen the, the, the channel subscribers just double, and it's, it's been a really cool feeling. And before we... We really dive into it. Also, note that at the end of this episode, we are not going to respond to the comment section because one, there are so many. I mean, like in the last few podcasts we've done, it's been hundreds. We're used to responding to what, like twenty comments, maybe, yeah, and just. So with like 200 uh, plus comments and the fact that it's Christmas. I mean, I went to two family things this weekend alone. Oh crap! It's Christmas. It is. Ah, what you get for us? Ooh. Mm, I haven't got anybody anything. I forgot. It's completely slipped my mind. You can start by bringing. I got you this tomorrow. little bitty little squishy pig. That was already on my desk. Mm-hmm. Much mm-hmm. appreciated. Well, um, but so it's gonna. It's it's really hard to kind of you know get those listed out. So what we're gonna do here in the next day or two, if you commented on the last couple of videos, we're gonna kind of pull those together and uh, get a few. And also one thing we're gonna do is start spending more time actually responding in the comment section. So, you know, if we don't read yours on the podcast, we'll make sure to try and respond to you. But, I mean, as the channel grows... I realize it is it is almost like a business trying to keep up with some of this stuff. It's great. So it's, bear with us. Some of the comments are really, some of them are funny. Some of them are thought-provoking. Very passionate. Some of them, some some, of them are a little hateful, but that's okay. Say, some are vicious, man. Yeah, yeah. Some, that's, some you, fella that's YouTube. Had a, yeah, that's the yeah. internet. You know, what do you do? He had a theory about uh, how Carl was going to survive or something, man. Mm. People just went in. Oh, like Piranha. No. Yeah, they saw, they, they, they tasted the blood in the water and just mm-hmm. tore yeah. it to pieces. Yeah. Apparently, Comfort. Piranhas would be safe until you put blood down it. Yeah. Then they'll go nuts. I was reading or something or about that, too. If you walking in like a pool of piranhas, you'll probably be okay. Yeah, oh. they're not like the movies would have them. Now, if you go in there with like half your arm hanging off, they're probably just going to go crazy. And if half of your arm is hanging off, then you've got much Why are you going bigger, in the water? Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> maybe that's the only way to get to the hospital. I don't know. Huh. But anyway, so season eight, we Man, are halfway what through it, and so many people have mixed oh. emotions. I know, Matt, you've had mixed emotions about yeah. this season. Yeah. Uh, so let's, before Started we get off, into kind of like a rundown, okay. what... Uh, what what are you thinking at this point in the season? If it would have been consistent with the first three or four episodes of the season, then I'd have been very happy. But it kind of dropped off. It started off on a high note and then kind of just dropped. I don't know, and I don't know what they changed. I think they had too many, uh, too many storylines not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I don't know. And then it, we got to the end of the season. And it was like, oh, let's let's wrap this up really quickly and get to a midseason cliffhanger kind of thing. Right. Which it really, this whole Carl thing really pisses me off. So when they said it's going to be the the midseason finale that everyone is talking about, everyone's talking about it because oh, screw you, Walking Dead. Like, why right. would you leave it on that? Why wouldn't you just be like, oh, he's dead instead of making? I know why because they want everyone to talk about the it ratings gouge. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. But what? Just kill him off so we can all be like, wow, that really that, that tore my me. heart yes, out. Yeah, right. And then people talk about how much they enjoyed the episode instead of arguing over it. But I get you know. Yeah. That's how I feel about that. Well, it's almost like with the mid-season finales, I don't know, it used to be, and it still kind of is, but I feel like The Walking Dead's mid-season fina- finales are typically better than their actual season I finales. I You know, um... Because guy, well, season two's mid-season finale was the whole uh, Sophia thing, which was still mm-hmm. one of my favorite points of this entire you, show. You have but, mentioned that you like the Sophia thing, dude. I'm telling you, season two, and a lot of people don't like season two, but season two is one of my favorites. I went you back went, and watched yeah, it the yeah. other week, and I loved it. Like loved every bit of it. It had its boring parts, no doubt, but I mean, it just was good drama. It was a lot of really good, diverse characters in there, and. Mm-hmm. Like, who's Shane going to go crazy and kill this week? Mm. And, you know, but anyways, but fun. the Sophia thing, I just remember that feeling when she came out the barn, sitting there watching it and just kind of like feeling like you got kicked in the teeth. You're like, oh my God. But uh, more kicked in the guts, more like it. My teeth yeah. didn't hurt, but my stomach did. Yeah. You but, get um, you know, and you swallow your teeth in your stomach. Then you're going to have pain in your gut. Yeah, really pain in your belly. I got teeth uh. in my belly. Why is it oh, crazy? Your stomach to... hurts, but that looks so wussy when you do that. You're just like, my tummy hurts. Be like, no, seriously. I, have <laughs> I think saying yeah. it like that kind of adds to it. <laughs> yeah. Rubbing your belly and going, oh, man, my stomach is killing me <laughs> is, is somewhat manly. Going, my belly hurts. Uh, yeah, you told me no baby talk in the right, studio. Right, I apologize. Right. We've moved past that. It's the holidays. 2016 was rough. The holidays. No. Yeah, it's 28. Okay, that's when he <laughs> rubs your ear and does it. It's so yeah. JP. What are your thoughts now that we've reached the the halfway point of this season? I thought I thought there was more good than bad for sure. I mean, like like you said, there were definitely some plot holes that I just did not like stepping in. You know, the uh, the whole thing with going back to the scavenger camp mm-hmm. just to round up I, some that people served and no purpose. Ending I up think, in your underwear. I'll give you my theory here in a second. He oh. wanted to fight naked, but I, AMC I, wouldn't let him. Right, right. What, is that true? 100%. He wanted to fight in the news. Yep, and AMC wouldn't let did him. Did he actually? Andrew Lincoln did? He wanted to, yeah. I read that when I read the whole petition thing. and then huh. Carl, I, I, like, literally, I thought you this were just morning, playing. I was, like, like, so he wanted to do it completely No, in the seriously. News. Well, I could, I could sound like a joke. I would imagine As much as Jadis that. wants him, I'm sure that would have been more true to her that character gonna, to be yeah, like, you know. zombie just grab his ding dong. That would have been weird. <laughs> Very awkward. Yeah. I, my theory with the with the garbage people is this. I think they're going to be, if you watch Game of Thrones, and again, if you're not if you're not current on Game of Thrones, spoilers. I mean, but like, you know, this is you? like last Why? season. Anyways, I think that the garbage people are going to be like the Knights of the Vale. I think that, like, remember in season six when Jon Snow's in that battle and it's not looking good where they're fighting Ramsay Bolton and then out of nowhere, Lloyd Baelish's like oh, Knights yeah? of the okay. Vales roll in and okay. save the day. I think that's what the garbage people are going to do. I think Rick and them are going to get in a tight spot, and you're thinking all hope's lost, and then the garbage people are going to rush in and save them, and that's where it's going to connect. So I'm okay. trying to have okay. faith in them that they okay. did. Because if they're not going to do anything with that, that wasn't an, a waste of episode Deuce space. Ex machina action. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think that they're going to the roll back yeah. in. I think they're going to roll back in and save the day when everything looks you know, perilous so, for so Rick and them. So you think when they do come back, they'll come back in Rick's favor? I think so. I think so. I mean, because that I, at this point, she, you know, that she knows that between Rick and the, the, the Saviors, how much more you know this the, that Rick and them are going to get when they loot the Saviors. So, you know, she gets a fourth of it, right? This is what he, he said. A quarter of it. So, is that, well, hold on, let me do the math. So carry the two. Five, yeah, that's a fourth. Yeah, fourth. Okay, so she's going to get you know a quarter of of everything. So I think she's going to come back in Rick's favor. I hope so. That would make it. I mean, that would be nice if they connect things. Mm-hmm. And you have some. Uh, you have a lot of uh, hope in the show. It's because I love the show so yeah. much. Yes, it's it's got its points where I'm kind of scratching my head. I'm not going to pretend it's flawless, but and, at the end of the yeah. day, I do love the show and I wish the best for it. And they are listening to this podcast, so they use our right, you know. Right. So whenever they man, hear, you say we we, like we that. said it off mic, but we had when we discussed what we thought was going to happen on the uh, premiere of season seven with mm-hmm, Negan, who mm-hmm. he was going to kill. Remember, we had some great like story writing that would have oh, just yeah. been like we involving Maggie and all of that, and we were like, maybe they'll do this, and then they didn't. No, of course it. not. But, you know, that was still a good episode. But they didn't, you know. So what exactly happened this first half of this season? Like, what has happened? We know it's culminated to... Well, I, th- I think it was so... Like, basically, they wanted you in the first half of this half season to feel like Rick and his the first crew quarter. had the... Yeah, there you go. They had the... Uh, yeah, the first quarter of right. this season. 
Uh, they wanted you to think that Rick and company had the upper hand, that things okay. were looking up. And they they had win under time. sales. Mm-hmm. But then you see, you know, especially here in episode eight, not so much. They're, like they're living know, in the sewers. They've uh, got to really, settle their differences within their group before they can actually pull together. I mean, look at Rick and Daryl. I mean, so Alexandria is done, right? For or are right they going to rebuild? For right okay, now, okay. yeah. Well, Alexandria, yeah, oh, right. Yeah. We warned, so I don't, you know, want to have to say comic spoilers before I have everything. So many questions. But, but in the comics, man, Alexand- Alexandria goes through the ringer two or three times. I mean, it's getting overrun, getting bombed, getting overrun again. I mean, Alexandria is withstood, which I don't know. I've heard that. Um, I don't know. I've heard they might uh, just rumors that in the comics they might start moving away from Alexandria. Huh. I don't know. You oh know, boy, with it with the New World Order story arc coming up, who knows? Yep, that's right. Because they've been in Alexandria for a while. It, it's they, been whereas a minute, you, know. you know, the beginning of the comics, you know, they move in the show. They moved from camp to the CDC, mm-hmm. which that wasn't in the comics. But then and they went to Herschel's farm, and then they went to the prison, and then they went to Terminus, and then they went to. So, you know, but in the comics, after doing all of these, this moving around, they got to Alexandria and they just nested there for mm-hmm. the last couple of years. But how did you, you blame the, in the in season one, when you went back and watched season mm-hmm. one, uh, did you notice how cheesy the effects are with the CDC explosion? Oh, yeah. Like, dude. holy I cow. noticed it in 2000 and what, 10 when it was, was it 10? It was 2010 when it debuted. Yeah, I, it, 10, it, 10, Halloween like 2010, because yeah. it was mm-hmm. only six episodes. So I reckon they didn't take a break. Mm-hmm. <laughs> with that one i had to yell at so many kids that night to get out of like get away from my house because i'm trying to watch a tv show. right i'm trying to watch zombies I, I remember my dad going them. i just don't see zombies being something that would work in a show and now it's like one of his favorite shows you to, tell your dad i don't see you as something that works in a show dad i don't see you working in a show dad. watching a show you're not my dad. real dad and he's like y- yes i am you're like well you're not you're <laughs> <laughs> all right fine like that's all I get. Arguments but, between my dad and I just fizzle out, and I'm just yeah. like, okay, fine. I'm going to get something to eat. Would you like some? Yes. Okay. Fine. But Love yeah, you. no. So season one was it was season one's great, man. Season one, going back and watching that, it was so good. Just when everything was new and you were getting introduced to these characters, it's a lot and like just a not understanding how this world operates, mm-hmm. and then uh, you know, and like I said, each episode in season one felt like its own kind of. Seven eight episode, but. season eight and seven eight. Oh, Jesus, I but I digress. Talk. I'm getting away from season eight. This season has been uh, kind of a like I said. I really feel like they they put a lot of effort into making you feel like this was going to be an easy win for Rick and company, and that, you no, know, they, never. And then in the last episode or two, you just really start seeing well, it, was, it all fall apart. It was fine until Daryl started calling the shots. Yeah, Daryl. I mean, yeah. You see what happens? You see what happens, fan people? Mm-hmm. Fan, I don't want because there's fanboys out there too. Fanboys yeah. and fan, fan girls. Boys, fan fan girls. persons. Mm-hmm. Fan, yeah, there you go. Fans. Or, or yeah, fans. just fans. Oh, yeah, fans, actually, yeah, that's you know? true. Yeah, there you <laughs> it's got to be... It's gonna be a shorter version of the word fan person. I just right? can't put my finger on it. Say, I'm a I'm a Redskins fan person. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, no, like I, I have to, especially too. I'm back on season four now, and like I love Daryl in those seasons, and I just am not a fan of Daryl in the in the last couple of seasons. And yeah. but but like I said, in seasons three, two, three, and four, you just he has so many more lines, and he's mm-hmm. and I get why he's all dark and brooding right now. He got Glenn killed. He was. Eating dog food, and I get all of that, but I just feel like they could do better. That's a with better that life than some could hope for, right? Because when you go back to <laughs> when you go back to the old episodes, I, I used to complain, and a lot of comic fans did that. The only real problem I had with Daryl was that a lot of really good comic characters got sidelined to give Daryl the screen time. Like Tyrese sh- should, and I really like Tyrese. I really liked you know just him as a person on the show, and I would have loved to have seen him become more like he was in the comics because, I mean, not only was he kind of Rick's right-hand man, but he also wasn't afraid to put Rick in his place when he needed to be. And in the show, you know, Tyrese was great, and I did enjoy having him on there, but I just feel like they they really lost out on what could have been great, and the same thing with Abraham. He should have been much more of like Rick's best friend slash right-hand man, but at least when they were sidelining these characters, at least it was for a good quality character. It's like, yeah, it sucks not to see them get the front... Maybe. Get the spotlight the way they should, but at least Daryl is a is a character that you know fills the role very nicely. And then in the last couple of seasons, I just feel like he's gotten to the point where I'm like, just kill Daryl and be done with it. Maybe that's the reason that the show has went off the rails so because much because of Daryl. Because in the beginning, they said, you know what, we were going to kill him off, but we did what the fan persons. Sorry, fans. Yeah. Is yeah. That a, should I just? I'm going to stick with fan persons. I feel more comfortable. I've been saying that for so long. It sounds more festive. You no, know, Daryl's fan persons, mm. and uh, so now they're like, we gave you Daryl. What else do you? Now we get to have you. We gave you yours. Now right. we get to have ours. 
<laughs> so if you don't like it, deal with it. You've got Daryl. Be happy. Right. So right. Maybe I hope you're happy, Daryl fan persons. Why. So, uh, JP, you said this far, you know, thus far, you've said more good than bad. Yeah, yeah, but like, like I said, just especially towards the end, the whole Daryl just, you know, flooding the compound with the zombies when he drove the truck into the wall, and then just leaving, just hoping for the best and being like, well, yeah. well you go back in time, and he usually supports, especially in seasons like three and four, mm-hmm. man, he supports Rick's decisions like wholeheartedly and has Rick's back on everything. Even when Rick wanted to turn me shown over That's to the true. governor, he didn't agree with it, but he was going along with whatever Rick said. And I guess now maybe maybe they're writing it after all this time. He's tired of playing. But the thing is, most of Rick's plans do end up working for them in the end, whether it's they mean to or not. You it's know? just like a relationship. I'm telling mm-hmm. you, at first it's like, oh, this is wonderful. I'm learning all these new things about this person. And then eight years later, you're like, I'm getting really tired of their bullshit. Ricky, Rick, Even and Dare Bear. Know what, not so say good. It, Ricky, Rick, and Dare Bear. That, that's mm-hmm. not an 80s I feel like rap that's, their, really that's their pet names for each pop, other. Yeah, yeah dude. I mean, you watch any old Western, you know, Daryl smoking them out. When you smoke somebody out of their hideout, you, you, you know, throw in the Matov cocktail, you wait for him to come out and you shoot him. You don't just run it into the wall and then leave. Yeah. I mean, he, he missed the most important part of the smoke out. I think that shooting them as they come out. I think Uh, in his mind, they weren't going to get out. I think Daryl thought that the, 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 the walkers were going to get in, they were going to kill everyone and no one would even have to fire a shot. But it's like, dude, even still, you should always have a backup to your plan. It's like, if that doesn't work, we should have that perimeter surround it and anyone that comes out you just lay them down i mean it, at which because daryl didn't care about the the innocent people so daryl mm-hmm. would have you know i would you make like, a plan you... anyone with the anyone anyone that comes out you at least capture them if nothing else you know what i mean like hold it you know you, you you if they don't if they give you opposition you take them out at least capture them so that way you know you've got a handle on the situation yeah, i mean people can say whatever they want about eugene being responsible for the saviors escaping it, it's all on daryl in my mind uh, i agree with you I'll, I'll never truly hate eugene 100 percent no I'll, he'll there will always be a place for eugene in my heart i don't know man my heart's pretty cold to eugene right now hmm. daryl's one of those i want him to come back you know, and I really feel like Daryl is going Daryl to die, though. Back. And didn't they, they uh, Morgan, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm interested to see what his, pro- anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. All right, so let's go through these episodes and just spend a little time on uh, each one. Matt, you want to lead us in with Here we the go. first one? Episode one of this season was entitled Mercy. Rick and his group, along with the Kingdom and Hilltop, have banded together to bring the fight to Negan and the saviors. And so this is the one where everyone, myself included, I still don't care what excuse they give you when mm-hmm. Negan stepped out other, on that platform. Mm-hmm. It should have been gone. I mean, Rick should have just said, oh, this was easy. Bow. Yeah. I don't care that he wanted to save the lieutenants and maybe Dwight. I mean, you still I, just, it's it's like I'm watching, uh, you know, back in season three when, when Carl kills that kid in the woods and then, you know, yeah. Rick's trying to explain to him, like, you shouldn't have done that if he was handing over his weapon. And Carl actually made a really good point when he's like, you know, you didn't, what is it, you didn't kill uh, Andrew and he came back and killed mom. I didn't kill the walker that ended up coming back to kill Dale every mm-hmm. time we did, we let someone. He was like, you sat in a room with the governor and let him walk out of there, like. You know, and I'm kind of like in this situation, like you were face to face with Negan and tons of guns. Mm-hmm. You should have killed him. That seems but like a recurring thing throughout the show there. Maybe there's a part of Rick that just can't do it. He can't. He's, he's lost so, he's so, so much damn already. funny. Mm-hmm. He's a bad guy, yeah. but he's so funny. He's badass with that jacket. The governor won't funny at all. He never told me the first joke, but this guy makes me laugh. Carl! And they just yell that all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? I saw someone put in our comment section, R.I.P. Carl, who would never stay in the house. All you had to do was stay in the house. He's a teenager. I mean, right. you can't expect him. He's going well, through the time I was a teenager of his was life. sneaking out. Exactly. You know He's I mean? always but, trying to leave the house. What are you going to do? JP, let's get, uh, but yeah, so that episode, I'm trying to think of like the highlights just to kind of, since we're recapping the season, that was, of course, the, the what well, we saw Gregory's cowardly ass, uh, you yeah. know, Gabriel tried to do the right thing and stay behind to save him. Ended up Gregory got away on his car, and Gabriel ended up in a uh, <laughs> in a trailer with Negan. Uh, I'm trying to think anything else that episode that was really, uh, you know, like the big. Of course, was that where it, Negan and uh, Gabriel got caught or stuck in the. That's at the end. At that's the end when that. Negan yeah. walks up and says, "You know, I hope you're wearing your, you know, your shitting pants." Is it, he says, "Your shitting pants." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I'm always one wearing mine. Those. You just yeah. never know. Every single pair of my pants is shitting pants. JP, let's uh, give us a rundown on episode two. All right, number two is called The Damned. Rick's forces split into separate parties to attack several of the Savior's outposts. 
during which many members of the group are killed, Eric is critically injured and rushed away by Aaron, Jesus stops Tara and Morgan from executing a group of surrendered saviors while clearing out an outpost with Daryl, Rick is confronted and held at gunpoint by Morales, Ooh. a survivor he met in the initial Atlanta camp who is now with the saviors. Ooh. This was the Morales episode. Yeah, so you know that was episode Morales came back and everyone was all... At the that, end of uh, it, right? He came yeah, the end of that, that was kind of like the... the, the Kind of not really a cliffhanger, but just kind of left yeah. you like, what the hell? That was short lived too. Yeah. Also, was this the episode that had? Uh, I know he was in it. Mikus was in this episode, I believe. Um, oh yeah, you. Uh, but I is this the one where he got killed? I need to go back and watch which one he no, was, was killed later. at the end of. Was it yeah. a few episodes yeah. down? Because it was Rick and Daryl that ended up killing him. I think it was the yeah. But so Minkus was the one that she was yelling at at the beginning of this episode when she's like, you know, he couldn't do whatever right, and she's like, just go inside, I'll do it. You know, that was. Yeah. From Boy Meets World, it's, he's doing big things. What was he also on that show, uh, One Tree Hill, for a while? Never heard of it. I'm just kidding. My, uh, they so. filmed it in Wilmington. They filmed it in Wilmington. Really? Yeah. My girlfriend watches that show. Uh, so let's. Uh, so yeah. So I mean, on this, you know, this was just kind of continuing the battle. This is where we had to, you know, towards the end, we saw Eric get hit. Which, mm -hmm. again, I'm going to say, at least the Aaron in this universe got it a lot better than the Aaron in the comic universe because Eric in the comics just steps forward and gets you know a bullet right through the head at least in the show aaron and eric got to say their goodbyes that was yeah. nice yeah oh, and they definitely. make it to say each see each other again yeah, you yeah. never know nice to have some closure it what was if, really cool one of the cool behind the scenes things that they had said was that they had actually filmed the scene of him walking away uh with another actor you know because they filmed that i guess separate than like the the dying scene or whatnot and he had just mentioned, like, oh, that's cool. I would have liked to have done it. And they, they actually reshot that whole scene of him walking away so that it could, even though you can't really even hardly tell mm -hmm. it's him, just so that he could be the one to, to actually do mm -hmm. it and walk away. What yeah. if the, uh, well, never mind, we'll get it. I was going to say, you know, the whispers could catch him. And well, well that's that's way down the road. We'll Which actually, that was next episode, wasn't it? That he walked, because he got shot in one episode, but he didn't die until the next episode. So actually, it's episode three. Oh, that uh, no. he dies. Speaking of which, let's get into it. Monsters. Daryl finds Morales threatening Rick and kills him. That was a very uh, quick end to Morales. Mm -hmm. He comes back and is giving Rick the whole speech of, you know, we're different people and blah, 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 blah. And Daryl just goes, Foom. I love how Rick goes, his name was, and he's like, I know who he was. Mm -hmm. His name was Robert Paulson. Uh, let's see. Uh, Daryl finds Rick, blah, blah, blah. The duo then pursues a group of saviors who are transporting weapons to another outpost. Gregory returns to the hilltop, and after a heated argument, Maggie ultimately allows him back into the community. Eric dies from his injuries. Allegedly. So that's what we were talking about. Yeah, leaving Aaron distraught. Despite Tara and Morgan's uh, objections, Jesus leads the group of uh, surrendered saviors to Hilltop, which we're going to talk about that here in a second. So I got a good question for both of you. Ezekiel's group attacks another savior compound, during which several kingdomers are shot while protecting Ezekiel. Several? I episode. thought it was pretty much all of them. It was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Except for like Jerry and Carol. Jerry. I think like yeah. everyone else died. So in this episode, this was the issue. This was like the big moral. This was the one where we had John Wick Morgan storming mm -hmm, through mm -hmm. the uh, you know the outpost and storming Morgan. So the question: What would you guys have done? I want to hear each of your answers separately, uh, starting with Matt. What would you have done with all of these savior prisoners? Would you have killed them or would you have taken them prisoner? You just you have to kill one, just one, just, just to one. set the just example. To set the, it's the guy, whoever the dude was that was Jared. I think is the one that runs his know. mouth, right? Yeah. yeah, no, just killed him. Just killed that anybody one. Like, anybody else? That's anybody really else? who I was hoping when she was so like. So you're like Negan-ing them. <clears throat> yeah, probably. Oh, yeah. I get it. As the seasons have went on, I get Negan. I am Negan. I get it. There oh, you go. God. So, JB, what would you have done? I, I would have killed them on sight. I mean, what else can you do? You don't have time to be leading around a bunch of prisoners. Wow. POWs. So you would have killed them on sight. You got to kill them on sight. Yeah. yeah. I see both sides. For me, that'd be a really tough choice. I understand. I think most people that watch the show are, everyone I've talked to has been like, you should kill them. And it's like, I get kind of, and plus too, it'd be really awkward to see someone named Jesus going, kill them all. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but uh, I understand his point of light. And it's kind of where Carl's going. They're trying to somewhat bring the old world back in the sense of, uh, you know, being being tried and given a chance instead of the whole shoot first, ask questions later. I don't know, man. I believe I pretty much would have had to, if as much as I hate it, probably go with Matt on this one. Just take one out to set the example. There you go. And then, you know, just 
I don't know, man. I don't know. That'd be a tough I, choice. I just don't think they're equipped for uh, for prisoners. I mean, they got well, they're obviously not, but you know, you well, know, it's one of those things. You've got kids, man. In this world, save people more than you take. in the Walking Dead world, no one forgets or forgives. So the thing is, you let them go, you know they're going to come back. So True ultimately, story. you're going to have to take them out. You need to turn them onto your side. You need to increase your ranks. Right. I mean, unless you, you know, unless you want to put an escort on each one until. You feel it really feel like they've been reformed, which don't get me wrong. The thing that we do know about the saviors are, though, they're just like with the uh, with Woodbury. The thing was, they did take you know people from Woodbury, <laughs> not really the soldiers, but no. I mean, a lot of those people were misled. You know, they were they were told we're fighting these savages that live in this prison and they've killed our own people and they broke in, and so now you know it's no telling what Negan's feeding these people to to dog get him food. to fight right definitely dog yeah. food which you know a lot of them were brainwashed so i think that jesus and uh carl and even rick cuz you know rick didn't want to kill any innocents in the way that daryl did i think they realize that some of the people that are there aren't there on their own accord they're doing what they have to to survive and given the chance they would probably come to your side so it's a big uh, moral conundrum there mm-hmm. i think i'm going to mm-hmm. go with ultimately just I would, I'd watch him i'd be like number 1 jared bring him out here mm-hmm. <laughs> bow the cupcake guy bow mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, it's a tough. Spot I would to be ask. In. I would ask that guy to pick someone else in the group, just a random person, and then I would give that person the gun and tell them they have to shoot. Right, uh, Jared. But then they would probably turn around and shoot use the you. gun on me. This is so, why we already agreed in the zombie or, apocalypse. We're not giving you guns. That's yeah, why we talked about the, this. At least get like a like a. We're gonna give you like a bow and arrow slingshot, or something. but you're not allowed to give it to anybody else. But like now, Matt, this is yours. <laughs> Do not share this. Go, Yo, check this out. This is really cool. <laughs> like they're trying to kill us. He's I'm a savior. Showing off my bow and arrow. <laughs> But yeah, so, uh, and I'm trying to think anything else in that episode. Now, was that, uh, well, no, that wasn't, uh, yeah, okay. No season, episode three. Uh, but yeah, so uh, Ezekiel's crew, that was the whole not, <laughs> what was it, uh, not but one. or Yeah, not one not of, our, one ranks. of our ranks. And I saw, like I told my brother after that episode, sure, he should have stood up, all looked around them. and be like, ah, no, what I meant was, <laughs> but one of our, say when he saw Jerry, I no, no, what I said was, all but but one yeah. will survive. Yeah, but one. And you did survive. But yeah, man, they got slaughtered. Everything was looking up for them that episode. Not one, not two, but all of our ranks <laughs> will die today. I mean, that was... Uh, that Except was for original. Jerry. I really like the ending of that episode, though, because everything seemed all storybook happy for Ezekiel and the kingdom. And then like at the very end, they just get mowed down, and you're like, what mm-hmm, just happened? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Matt, let's move us into uh, episode, episode four. four, which is some guy, which is uh, that's pretty much Ezekiel, how he feels at the end of this episode. Uh, his group is ambushed by the saviors and every soldier in the group is killed except for Ezekiel and Jerry. Carol clears the inside of the compound, killing all but two saviors who escape. Their getaway is ultimately foiled by Rick and Daryl in that amazing motorcycle slash truck chase. In which scene. only Rick and Daryl know how to shoot. Jesus. As Ezekiel, Jerry, and Carol head back to the kingdom, they are surrounded by walkers. Shiva sacrifices herself to save them. The trio returns to the kingdom where Ezekiel's confidence in himself as and a leader. S- and side note, to give credit uh, to the source, we're using Wikipedia here. So yeah, if you're like, yeah, where yeah. did they get this? We didn't type these up. We're getting this, this off Wikipedia. Wikipedia. I should have so, said that at the beginning. So but... random person, thank you very much for typing this Right, yes. We got this. We're just getting these summaries and names from Wikipedia just to, you know, just kind of get a flow. Yeah, that episode was sad, man. I really didn't. I, I, didn't, I mean, as a comic reader, I figured that Shiva's death was inevitable. But I, I, I didn't think it would bother. It, I didn't think it would bother me that bad. It was that hard was to watch. so sad. It, man. Listen, it was very graphic. It what was. what hit you harder, Carl getting bitten or uh, Shiva Are going you down? Kidding like me? Leave Shiva. that in the comments section. Oh, yeah, oh no, well, Carl bit for me. Just hit me right in the well, gut. I didn't care. Whatever. It's about time. That tiger was so innocent. <laughs> so, so innocent. So JP so innocent. Shiva was sadder to you than Carl. I I think like. Like watching in the moment, I think it hit me harder. Yeah, which I'm the I'm the kind of person that when those SPCA commercials, and like, hey, I make my dog watch. I'm like, him. oh my god! But then the one comes on. This is little, oh, and then he's starving, and I'm like, oh, what else is on? You know. I just tell my dog, I'm like, yeah, you see that? Yeah, the next time you you. fuss because I don't feel like getting off the couch to take you to the park, just look at still how good you've got it. I'll take you to the park tomorrow. So I will ball my eyes out and give fifty dollars a month to SPCA, but I can't even give thirty five cents. The cost of a cup of coffee a month. Are you, are you giving a free plug to the SPCA? <laughs> Not at all. Okay. I mean, I'm cool with it. I like the SPCA. And why so. are these kids drinking coffee? Mm. <laughs> so that's another story. So, <laughs> yeah! Uh, that was funny. I enjoyed that. But that was uh, quite the episode. We got to see Jeffrey Dahmer in that episode. 
Or yeah, at least, oh, or at least oh, his long lost him, brother. But he got was. to see Jerry be badass and split Jeffrey Dahmer and then like just half. That was cool. I Look love that scene. Of... It was a great like surprise like character showing up scene there. It was a great science experiment mm-hmm. learning the human anatomy. Because man, you got it and when you saw innards. Dahmer get split. Uh, and, and yeah, things looked real dire. Carol showed up, saved the day. Had a choice of what getting the truck with the gun on it or saving Ezekiel and Jerry, and she saved them, of course. And like we we said earlier, this season, Carol. Well, not this season specifically, but the whole show. Carol is just the right place, at the right time, kind of person. She because is. that's mm-hmm. like you know, twice this season, she just happened like you know to to show up. It was Rick. You know, she saved in a few episodes past that but so uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of all the big things that happened, but that was really you know Ezekiel based. We we saw them, uh, yeah, interesting, uh, interesting episode. But so that's where Ezekiel just completely gave up being because that's where uh, after Shiva died, was it was either right before, or right after he died that Jerry was talking to him and he's like, "Man, I'm not a king, like I'm just some guy. I'm not a king, you know." And and Jerry, I, 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 it's something human about Jerry wanting him to be a king, though. You know what I mean? Like in mm-hmm. this wasteland, Jerry wants a king to serve. Like he wants. You know what I mean? It's it's really I like that they did that because it's not that Jerry's dumb or Jerry's, you know, it's just that everybody Jerry's needs Jerry. something to feel like they're a part of like the greater good type deal. And Ezekiel being a king gave Jerry that hope. Mm-hmm. So, well, I mean, you know. Ezekiel being a king basically makes Jerry a knight. And right. Who doesn't want to be a knight? I know? want to be a knight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'd be a squire. Well, <laughs> you could be still. my squire, Matt. You know, be Make me laugh, bring me wine, and then hide when the fighting comes. You can be the piss boy. <laughs> What do I do with the piss? You ever seen History of the World Part 1? No. It's up to you to figure it out. Hmm. Oh, boy. Mm-hmm. So, you just took us into the next episode. So, now, JP, take us into the next episode. episode. Episode number five is the Big Scary You. What is the Big Scary You? Well, we're going to find through. out together. After confessing their sins to each other, Gabriel and Negan uh, fall in love. Oh, mm-hmm, wait a minute. Mm-hmm, no, that, mm-hmm. That's a piece of fan fiction. Is that your I'm fan fiction? Yes, okay. yes. No, after confessing their sins to each other, Gabriel and Negan manage to escape from the trailer. Simon and the other lieutenants grow suspicious of each other, knowing that Rick's forces must have inside info. The workers in the sanctuary become increasingly frustrated with their living conditions. Mm-hmm. A riot nearly ensues until Negan returns and restores order. Gabriel is locked in a cell where Eugene discovers him sick and suffering. Meanwhile, Rick and Daryl argue over how to take out the saviors, leading Daryl to abandon mm-hmm. Rick. And I can that imagine. was the episode where they got to fighting, right? Yeah, that was we where saw the scuffle. I can understand Ricky, the... Rick, and Dare Bear just no I can more. understand the people in the sanctuary getting frustrated. It probably smells like burning flesh mm-hmm. everywhere. God, every just time he gets mad, he burns somebody. Dog food and... People just taking shits in random corners. Brains everywhere. Guys, we've got to do something here. I can only like uh, I can only stand so much. But man, I, I enjoy I, a lot. Of, I've, I've heard a lot of people complain about that episode being boring. But I loved Negan and Gabriel sitting in the trailer. I, I think it did a really good job because all you've seen is kind of Negan's, you know, kind of like his, his 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 act, how he is when he's in front of a large group of people, or how he is when he knows that the. But I mean, now you've got him stuck in a trailer where things look bleak, and you find out that he's. You know, he's human, but, I mean, he's still pretty much Negan. Like, you know, what what you see is what you get as far as the way, you know, he's he still thinks that way. And Gabriel, you know, getting that opportunity to reach into Negan's pants and grab the gun, you know, he almost got him from behind there. Do you but, think he uh, was going for the gun? Is uh, that what you're getting at? No, no, of course he was. But I would just mm. say he was kind of Two playing, men, one trailer. Yeah. Two men, one gun. Just mm-hmm. playing that Carol card, you know, like making Negan lower his uh, his defenses and let him in. And- I just my favorite part of that whole thing was when uh when when Gabriel locked himself in the closet and then you know, Negan confesses and, and he opens the door and Negan just clocks him one time and mm-hmm. it's like you can keep the gun. <laughs> it's like dude. That was I actually for the night yeah, that was one of the nicest things that he could possibly do. Oh, he, yeah, he could have absolutely just destroyed him right mm-hmm. there. He mm-hmm. tried to murder him and to fight him. I just it, so many people have chances to kill Negan and they don't do it. Well, because he's an awesome character. Oh yeah. I mean that plot armor. <laughs> I think man. they secretly know that too in their heads. They're like, he's just too cool of a guy. I can't. We need to him. kill him, but I really that's like I said, it's like Rick was like, All right, let's take him out, but if you don't have to, don't. Yeah. Leave him with me because I want him to tell me a joke before we finish him off. <laughs> well, everybody, everybody's in a everybody's in a big group talking about how to take out Negan and Daryl's like, uh, we gotta kill him. And Rick's like, No, he's too cool. People will stop watching if we kill him. <laughs> 
people will stop watching. And then Rick just stares. He, he does his eye thing where he stares at the camera and it's like, and starts that's pulling good. back. And that's the end of an episode. That, dude, I would like to see that as a season finale. Holy crap. And you're like, what just happened? <laughs> How many walls did we just break down? Then Deadpool runs in there. And oh, like, hey, man. Welcome to the fourth wall club. So episode six, a very crucial episode this season. Uh, you know, of course, you have Rick going to see Jadis and the whole garbage crew, and they lock him up and keep him naked in his mm-hmm. boxers, mm-hmm. kind low of. Low point of the season. Yeah, the low yeah, point. Mm-hmm. Okay. JP's. No one uh, did, so. Uh, I'm still holding out hope again that they're going to come back and there's going to be some some completion of this story that they didn't. That wasn't just a waste of time. Uh, but also very crucial uh, episode because this is the episode that Carl gets bit in, which mm-hmm. you've probably by now heard. But if you hadn't, it's it's in this this episode. Just watch when he gets overrun. He's uh, yeah, by holding two you know, whole walkers. Yeah, we've seen yeah, very believable. We've seen Carl and company <laughs> deal with a lot more than two walkers, and so that's where a lot of people are disappointed to see two walkers, mm-hmm. you know, overpower Carl when we've seen them defy so many more odds. And that's just you know, I guess it's it's it's, it's Everybody wants different things, but that's what I've seen a lot of common complaint about is that, you know, how how did two walkers do it, man? But yeah. uh, you can actually see the exact moment in that episode. Go back and watch it when Carl's uh, on the ground and got one by the throat and watch the other one crawling to him, and you will see the moment that Carl get bit, got bit. Ezekiel uh, has isolated himself at the kingdom, and Carol's trying to encourage him to be the leader that people need, but... It's not working. Maggie has the uh, group of captured saviors placed in a uh, holding area and forces Gregory to join them. And how satisfying was that to watch mm-hmm. her? You know, like he's, we shouldn't have these people here. Oh, yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, why don't you go in there and tell them that? Mm-hmm. It was it was glorious to see. Gregory but. belongs. Pivotal part of this season, though it did hit the low point with the whole Rick Jadis thing. I mean, went in there with no backup plan. I mean, they could have just shot him on sight. I mean, like, oh, <laughs> there is he. <laughs> Gun shoot, bang! <laughs> yeah, watched too many Star Wars movies. Uh, but yeah, so uh, we got that boring. But uh, very, and now Sadiq's been kind of formally introduced. We got to know him a lot better, and he got Carl bit. Really, Carl Sadiq. got himself bit, but helping Sadiq. Matt, take us into episode seven. So um, Eugene finds out that Dwight's working for Rick and the the gang. And, uh, you know, decides not to tell him. And now he has his loyalty to Negan, outlines a plan to get rid of the Walkers, which he does. Uh, Morgan and Tara help Daryl drive a truck through the sanctuary's walls uh, that kills a lot of the saviors, but none of the important ones. And then they, just, like JP said, they just leave. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, let's just go home. And Rick finally convinces Jadis and the scavengers to align with him. And they plan to have the saviors surrender. We are fairly certain how that's going to go. And because when they arrive at the sanctuary, Rick finds out that Daryl and them have done their own thing. Dare bared and went behind his back. But yeah, so this is the, that's the this is the episode where we see the cool little uh, music playing, uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Little playing little thing, and Dwight it shoots it glider. down before he gets to get the zombies out of there. And uh, yeah, so I mean, they're pretty much all in one. Uh, you know, everything that uh, Matt said kind of just summarized it perfectly. I mean, this is where we see. This is where I kind of got to where you know you said that you'll always have a place in your heart for Dwight. Mm-hmm. I mean, not Dwight, Eugene. Mm-hmm. This was the episode for me where that little space that I had left for him mm-hmm. just got filled up real quick. Oh like, no, I still forgive. Him. And then now he's, of course, the very next episode changed his mind. But mm-hmm. this, you know, whole. But this is where we get to see drunk Eugene. We really were hoping he was going to drunk dial Negan. Oh, God. Just wanted to tell you you're awesome. I got, oh, God. I need some more wine. I'm going to throw this up real quick. I'm going to drink some more. I got your plan. It involves wine. But, uh, yeah, JP, take us on to episode eight, and then we'll give like a kind of a final thoughts and be out of here. All right. This one's called How It's Gotta Be. Eugene's plan allows the saviors to escape, mm-hmm. and separately the saviors waylay the uh, allied forces. That's what I'm going to start calling the Alexandria Hilltop and Kingdom connection. Okay. Allied forces. Oh, good. allied forces. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm not trying to say Negan's Hitler or anything. I'm just, <laughs> it makes sense. Anyway. The scavengers abandon Rick, leading him to return to Alexandria. Ezekiel ensures that the kingdom residents are able to escape before locking himself in the community with the saviors. Negan attacks Alexandria, but Carl devises a plan to allow the Alexandria residents to escape into the sewers. Carl reveals that he had been bitten while escorting Sadiq to Alexandria. Oh, man. So there we go. There it is. I would love for the start of the next uh, the the mid season premiere 
uh, to start with Splinter and the Ninja Turtles coming out. That would make no sense. I know, right? Do you um, think the, the ooze would I, heal the ooze, Carl? The toxic, that's, what you that's what's going to connect everything. Uh, since Dare Disney to, owns throw like, Daredevil in there too. I mean, since Disney owns ooze, Fox you know? and everything else now, I think it'll be okay. So check in Wikipedia. I'm looking at their ratings, and they just went like down. They started out uh, a 5.0 for Mercy, the first episode, and then the next episode got a 4.0, and then the ne- the third one got a 3.8, Jeez. then the fourth one got a 3.9, and then it went back down to a 3.4, 3.6, mm-hmm. 3.3, and the uh, mid-season finale only got a 3.4. Is it wow. saying like 3.4 people watched? No, the that's just the score. Is that pretty oh. much us? <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just us. And, Am I the one? And my dad person? is no, my dad's okay. the point four because he oh, kind of okay. dozes off and oh, goes yeah. back okay, in. Okay, cool. Uh, and I'm looking at the uh, viewers they had, and it started out with 11 million and got down into the eights for the next three, and then down into seven, came back up to eight for six, down to seven for the next two. Hmm. So the mid-season finale was like lower than a couple episodes before that. This oh, yeah, the mid-season the lowest, finale yeah, only got 7.89 million, uh, whereas the uh, premiere had 11.44. Maybe Gimple does need to go. I mean, the mm. proof's in the pudding. What do you think, Pop uh, Gimple listener? like a pimple. That sounds- <laughs> hey, that's, that's a good slogan he's got a, for this. He's had to have been called Gimple Pimple like his I don't whole know life. Those, I guarantee uh, he was bullied in high school called you know Gimple the Pimple or something. Pop. I like that. So looking back, uh, we're going to rate this, give our final thoughts, and be out of your hair. The but whole we do thank season? you for listening. Or the whole mid season. The whole, uh, you know, yeah. First eight episodes. Yeah. So yeah, uh, go back and do the math because I gave like a bunch of sixes and sevens. I don't think I went above seven this season. I think that we've summed seven, it up pretty good. I mean, we, we we I think that as we we'll, we'll we'll rate it and then we'll kind of give our hopes and expectations for the next half. All right. So, so I give it a know. seven. And I hope it gets better. Okay, that's better than I thought you were going to give. That's it. all I You're got. giving the first half of the season a seven. The, this, the first half of the season saved the second half of the season. You mean the first half of the first quarter saved the first half of the the first the first fourth? I'm going to grab a calculator. Sucks. I'll be Math back in just sucks. a second. I know what you're saying. The first few episodes saved the last few for you because right. you enjoyed those right. much better. JP, what are you going to rate this season thus far? Yeah, I was thinking seven as well. Oh, wow. That's honestly where I, I was going to stick six to. And a half, wow, you, you like this season pretty, a little better than wow, I did. Okay. I mean, like I said, there were just some uh, some really some sticking points that are still just kind of stuck in my craw. But I thought you said mm. they were more good than bad. There was one. I mean, seven's more good than bad. Well, Not I need to really. go to six. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's I'll adjust my score. It's fine. You stick at seven. I felt that that was too high anyway, so I'm going with six. Yeah. Okay. On the first half, I felt first if quarter. I had said like eight, that would have been way too high. So. Yeah. So you're going with seven. I'm gonna go down a little okay. bit. Yep. Okay. Cool. We're, we've adjusted for inflation. Mm. Nice. Yeah. Um, I, it's it's really hard. I really want to say like uh, I wanted to do like a seven and a half or eight, but it's because yeah. I'm really trying to remain hopeful that this Carl death is going to create some great storytelling. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping that we'll see. Like when we go back through when we watch the next half of the season, we'll look back on this and some of the low points and be like, oh man, but it was so, everything kind of came around. Like the, even the low point of like the whole scavengers thing will make sense because they'll come back. It'll justify some of the. I hope so, so I'm gonna I'm gonna my rating is going to be a hopeful rating because I'm ho- being hopeful going to the next half. I'm gonna say I give it an eight. Okay. Because I'm hoping that next the next half of the season is going to justify all of the things from the first half. Like, again, we'll see the saviors roll in. I mean, the scavengers well, either save out. the day or even make the threat even greater by showing up on Negan's side again, and then hopefully we'll get the satisfaction of seeing them dealt with once and for all. Um, you that know, I'm hoping that Carl's death will have some some crazy effects on Rick that will just... So I don't know. My, I'm, do, I'm giving it an eight, but it's hopeful. If the second half sucks, we are going to... I'm going to go back and re-rate... The first half, and then rate the whole you know season. Mm-hmm. So, and I will say, if I had to name an MVP for uh, for this half of the season, I'd say it's got to be Maggie. Maggie, yeah, as little as she I was in this first. I mean, half. she wasn't in a lot, but what she was in there, I really enjoyed. Yeah, she's I was a say, I an awesome actress. Yeah, I think we I talked about that a few episodes ago, where she was after she killed the guy uh, from the Saviors. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, really good. So uh, yeah, I so uh, hopes going in the next season. I kind of just said mine right there, but I, I'm hoping that Carl's death will be meaningful. I hope that they. I want it to make me cry. I don't cry ever or choke up, and I want them to do. They have an opportunity here to really hit you in the feels. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is arguably one of the most important characters on the show. I mean, this was the future of the show and the future of 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 our group of. Well, now it's Judith. You know, survivors. So. They better make Carl's death sting, make it meaningful. You know, I mean, show us some flashbacks. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, of 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 him through something. It'd make be this awesome good. If Judith was like time jump, like 16, 17 years old, mm-hmm. and now she takes. And she goes uh, back and she saves. 
saves oh, Carl. Oh, yeah. like time travel. Yeah. Okay, well, it's hope. Oh, yeah, yeah. What are the holidays oh, I thought you, without I, you hope? You said time jump. I thought you were talking about time travel. Well, I've been, I've been uh, watching Time dark. travel is a form of time jump, just not as far. I've been watching Dark on Netflix, and that's entirely about time about travel. That, yeah, yeah it's, it's okay. But, uh, yeah, so that's my hopes, that Carl's you death skip, is... you got a time you got a time hop, you got a time mm-hmm. jump. Uh, maybe you got like a time waddle. Maybe. Yeah. Time, time run. Crawl. All right, but yeah, so that's my uh, hopes that Carl's death is made. Uh, it, it, I mean, you, you just got rid of a lot of people's favorite characters. So, yes, make sure that it was well done. It you is know the what I holidays, mean? holidays. So. so, that's my hopes. Uh, and I, I hope that the, the, the final battle will be, you know, I hope there's some good action. I don't know, man. I've, I've got high hopes. Matt, what do you want to see out of the second half? Yeah, I just, I want it to be better. I want there to I want them to concentrate maybe just one or two storylines per episode, and don't give me eight different storylines over the course of the season. Like stick with you know maybe three in all, and kind of switch between them between the you got eight episodes. Come on, right? That's plenty of time to kind of fix what's wrong. Absolutely agreed. Go into season nine. Everybody's going to be on fire for season nine. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I That's think what if I they want. if they can't pull it off, uh, Gimple's got to go. Gimple's got to go. Well, and see, here's the thing too. A lot of people are questioning the the future of The Walking Dead. You know, they haven't been renewed for for yeah. season nine yet. They uh, will. Who was it? Somebody was saying about how I think I think it was you that saying last week about how they're going to milk it for everything it's worth. Like they're going to they're going to ring it. Maybe it was you, James. Well, they, well, you know what I think that they're doing though is I mean it's it, well Gimple said that he thinks he could easily make it to season 10. So, I'm sure they'll be okay, but that begs the question, killing Carl, are they preparing for the last 2 or 3 years of The Walking Dead? Like are they planning on kind of going into the end? Like maybe they'll maybe, end it with the whisperers. Yeah, I was going to say maybe you know. season 9 will be the last one. You know. I, I don't know. Cuz that it, would make sense if they would hold off and then say, "Okay, we're giving season 9, but it's the final season." And then they'll promote it as the farewell season. Right. The I think th- I think that the show will at least go to 10. That's my prediction. Not just cuz Gimple said it, but because looking at the way that it's going, I think they could get to 10 and end it. Like they'll probably ki- if they did that they would kill off a Rick probably like halfway through season 9 and Yeah. You Deal know, with play the aftermath. Yeah. yeah. And then well, show like like you know maybe in the, going into 10 they'll kind of jump forward in time a little bit and showing like a few of the survivors left. As long as they don't kill Michonne. You kill Michonne, I'm going to have a problem. Which being see. that she's kind of taken uh, Andrea's role in the comics, I'm kind of getting nervous. But uh, yeah, so I am excited for the for the next half of the season and the very last season. Sorry to interrupt, but the very last season, I would love to see a major character die, like the last eight episodes leading up to the season finale, mm-hmm. like somebody major and huge die. Because I mean, they all start. Dying. I mean, maybe that might get old after a while, but right, that seems pretty cool. Because they're all gonna die, right? Right. Yeah. Well, not all of them. Oh. Some of them may survive. But um, so, again, I think I discussed this earlier. If I didn't, I, I, I'm very absent-minded today. I was on point last week, and today I'm I'm everywhere. I guess it's because of the station we're preparing so hard for Christmas. It just mm-hmm. you know. Anyways, it's a Monday. Um, but I will say, uh, commenters, you know, we've been very fortunate to to have so many comments. So again, at some point this week, we are going to make a video and try to respond to some of your comments. It's one of our favorite parts. However, at this point, it would be a whole other hour to go yeah. through that comment mm-hmm. section, mm-hmm. and with the holidays and you know so much going on, it's just hard to sit down and because we usually copy and paste these and then like you know go th- go over them and stuff. So. We'll get to that at some point. But thank you so much for over 1,000 yeah, subscribers. We did it. Uh, helping get the view count up, all the comments, man. It's awesome. We plan on doing some merchandise soon, some giveaways, mm-hmm. lots of fun stuff. A lot stuff of big heading stuff coming in 2018. I'm telling yeah. you. Secret handshake. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Why not? Okay. But uh, yeah, so I think that is about going to wrap it up for us as we sign off, oh. and we will be back. We're going to podcast. We're not, you know, we're not going to be taking our typical break. I well, mean, next now, next Monday is Christmas Day, so yeah, we'll probably like Tuesday or Wednesday okay. we'll have you yeah. a podcast okay. out. But we plan to have several out, hopefully a week. So we're going to keep podcasting. So if you're one of those people you're used to signing off and not coming back to us until the show starts back up, no, hit that notification thing. So that will tell you when mm-hmm. we upload mm-hmm. and stick with us. We've got a lot on the way for you. And uh, we will see you probably in a few days. Yeah. I'm Justin. Hey, I'm Matt. And JP.